another two. afternoon everyone welcome back here we are live on campus for all animals at the Houston SPCA my name is Dr. Roberta Westbrook and I'm the chief veterinarian and medical director here and look who we've got here as our guest today this is cute little baby this is baby who is currently looking for her forever home she is a wonderfully behaved sweet girl look at that face She's so sweet and she's available for adoption. Please take time this week, this weekend to come out to our campus. No appointment necessary. Come out, look at the dogs, the cats, the puppies, the kittens, and try to find a, a pet to be part of your home forever. So this is Baby. She came to us from a family who was just looking to find her a more appropriate home, but she's great. She's small. She's around 30 pounds or so, full grown. She's a year old female. She's already spayed and she is ready to go. So please come take a look at Baby. So sweet. Look at that face. So we are going to let Baby play a little bit. And maybe you guys can get to see her do that. She is, you want to get down? You want to get down and play a little bit? Such a sweet girl. Please come out and see us. Thank you for joining us today. Again, we're at, at the Campus for All Animals, the Houston SPCA. And uh, Baby's really well behaved. She's playing with a snuffle mat right now. The snuffle mat is a really creative toy that we have to help keep animals really engaged in um in food and it provides some mental stimulation so this is a, a nice little toy that we have where you can put treats inside of it and your dog can sniff around in there and look for the treats she really enjoys it she already knows what to do very well behaved those are delicious treats aren't they baby you can see she's small she's a perfect family pet perfect little size to fit 
on your lap or in your bed or on your couch or in your chair in the living room. So we are certainly happy to have her, but we can't wait until she finds her forever home. And even more exciting today, I'm going to be discussing my third and final section on allergies. The last couple of weeks, we talked about different types of allergies in your pet. We discussed um, environmental allergies. So your dogs and your cats can have allergies to things in the environment, to grasses, to trees, to mold, even to other pets sometimes. So we talked about those clinical signs, which causes a lot of itching and sometimes infections in the skin and ears. Then last week, we talked about flea allergies. Fleas are very, very common, particularly in the spring and summer months. We're gonna have a lot of fleas this year. And so we wanted to make sure that you all are aware of flea allergy dermatitis and that you see your family veterinarian about getting regular checkups and getting those fleas treated and off of your pet so that your pets will be comfortable throughout the rest of the summer. And today we're gonna to talk about another common type of allergy known as food allergies. This is also very, very common. So start thinking of questions that you might have related to allergies in general, but particularly today, we're gonna to talk about food allergies, things that your pets may or may not have adverse reactions to. And I'll give you some ways that you might know that your pet has food allergies and things that we can do to help diagnose it. And then how can we treat it? So go ahead and pop those questions up. I'm going to get um, a couple of things here for you that I want you to see. And so when we talk about food allergies, um, what we're talking about is when your pet may have an adverse reaction to something in their diet. And what it can result in is signs like itching, skin infections, ear infections, licking of the paws, rubbing of the face, licking of the rear end, these can actually be signs of food allergies. I mentioned those very same signs when I was talking about environmental allergies, and that's because food allergies and environmental allergies can look very, very similar. And so oftentimes an itchy dog, we have to do a lot of digging and asking you a lot of questions about your pet so that we can help figure out whether or not your pet has a food allergy or an environmental allergy, or like about 30% of animals, sometimes they have both. Sometimes they have both food allergy and environmental allergies. So what questions do you have to start with related to food allergies? We've got a question here and it says, can tear stains be an indication of allergies in my Frenchie? So tear staining is very common, particularly in certain breeds, um, particularly in French bulldogs. Sometimes what winds up happening there is their eyes are, are somewhat big and there is a very interesting anatomical um, duct that goes from the corner of the eye to the nose. It's a little drain essentially. And so what can happen is sometimes it's really less of an allergy and sometimes it's just the confirmation of the face. So dogs that have big eyes, particularly if the eyes protrude a little bit, pugs, Shih Tzu's, Lassopsos, maybe French Bulldogs. Sometimes when they have big eyes and they sit out, sometimes it can block the tear duct, and sometimes the tears will fall onto the face. And when those tears fall onto the face, they can react with the air and create like a bronze staining. And so sometimes it's related to confirmation, but yes, it can be related to inflammation related to allergies as well. So it just depends on the breed that you have and what else is going on. So if your French bulldog also has itching and licking of the paws or the face or the armpits, or the belly, then certainly it could be related to allergies. And I would say, go to your family veterinarian, let them ask all the questions about your pet and we can try to determine which one it is. So food allergies, what's one thing that you might notice if your pet has food allergies? Not only the itching, but if they are allergic to something in their diet, oftentimes the symptoms are going to be year round year round. Why are they year round? Because they're eating the same food year round. It's different from environmental allergies because environmental allergies tend to be more seasonal, right? Because in the spring and summer, that's when things are in bloom. And so that's when you notice the signs getting worse in environmental allergies. And food allergies, they're eating the food constantly. And so you might notice that your pet has those symptoms year round. So that's one, one tip uh, that we might use to help determine. Any other questions? 
Yes, Stacy wants to know, is allergy testing beneficial or should we just start with food elimination if we see allergies in our pet? Great question. So how can we diagnose food allergy? For food allergy, really the best thing to do is to do an elimination diet. What that means is we try to find a diet that has proteins and ingredients that your pet's immune system is naive to that they've never seen before because they're less likely to have a reaction to it. There are some blood and skin tests that we do for allergies, but those tend to be um, more effective for environmental allergies. Um, and so for food, it really is just best to do an elimination diet. So you might wonder, what is it in the food? What is it in the food that my pet's allergic to? Well, the most common things are animal proteins, animal proteins. So things like beef, chicken, pork, lamb, sometimes fish, and sometimes wheat, but those are lower down on the list. So it's really the animal protein. And another thing to realize is that some of those proteins kind of what we call cross react, which means if your pet is allergic to chicken, your pet may also be allergic to other poultry. Or if your pet is allergic to beef, your pet may also be allergic to lamb. And so you really need to follow up with your family veterinarian to find an appropriate diet that is good for an elimination trial for your pet. I have a very common diet here by Hills Science Diet. It's called ZD. ZD is a prescription diet that you have to get prescribed from your family veterinarian, but it is really good for animals who are trying to determine whether or not they in fact have a food allergy. And the way this works is that it has broken down the proteins in the, in the food so that your pet's immune system doesn't react to it, so that your pet's immune system doesn't recognize it. So this may be something that's appropriate for your pet. Please have your pet see your family veterinarian if you have any questions about food allergies. What else do we have? All right. Hobby wants to know that she noticed some redness and bumpiness on the side of her dog's mouth. Do you think that could be a diet allergic reaction? It absolutely uh, could be. So if your pet has maybe redness or bumps around the mouth, sometimes it can be the food. Sometimes it can be the bowl that the food is in. You have to pay attention to that. Some pets can have a reaction to like plastic food bowls. So that's uh, something that can happen. Uh, so it's very possible. And even more possible if you're noticing itching in the rest of the body as well. It also might be conformational. And what might what I mean by that is if your pet has a lot of skin folds around the mouth, maybe like a mastiff or a basset hound or you know, a dog that has big jowls, sometimes though the food and the water kind of gets caught in the skin there and it can create inflammation and infection. And so again, following up with your family veterinarian to help determine whether that's just confirmation for your pet or whether in fact it is related to an allergy. Great question. What else can I help with? Kristen wants to know her pup secretly vomits in the corners of her home. Could this be a reaction to his food? Great question again. So secretly vomits in the corner. So when we talk about adverse food reactions, I mentioned food allergies, which tend to be more itching, but we also have just adverse food reactions or what we call food intolerance. So food intolerance means that the particular food that your pet ate recently or eats on a regular basis may just not agree with their gastrointestinal system. And in food intolerance, you're more likely to see intermittent vomiting. And that is slightly different than a food allergy in which the immune system reacts and that causes the licking and the scratching and the skin and ear infections. So, but same thing, you may have to try a diet that agrees more with your pet's uh, gastrointestinal system if you're noticing that they're vomiting periodically. It could be something that they're just not agreeing with in that diet. Any other questions? Ariel wants to know, do you recommend periodically changing your pet's diet such as the protein they eat? That's a great question. I would say the old cliche, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So you do not need to change your pet's diet periodically. If they are doing well on their current diet, they don't have diarrhea, their stool is formed, they're not vomiting, 
they're not itching, scratching, licking at their paws, and that they have nice shiny coat. If that diet is working for them and your pet enjoys it and is eating well every day, there's no need to change it. Certainly there's some pets who enjoy a little bit of treat here and there, but again, if you're changing your pet's diet, make sure that you're doing it very gradually so that we don't cause GI upset by changing the diet very frequently. Sometimes changing the diet frequently can actually cause stomach upset. So we have to be careful about that. Great question. Anything else? Okay. Yes. Avi also wants to know, follow up, what's the best kind of bowl to use to avoid allergies? Oh, yes. The best kind of bowl to use would be a ceramic bowl or maybe even a stainless steel bowl. But even stainless steel bowls, you have to make sure that they stay clean because after a while, they get a film on them. If you don't clean a stainless steel bowl very well, sometimes from the saliva and the food, a film will build up on it and that can create inflammation in the mouth. So a ceramic bowl would be great, but even stainless steel, as long as you're keeping it clean, keep those bowls clean. Great question. Okay, we've got a question from Corey about cats. Can yes. allergies cause vomiting in cats? Does it kind of work the same way? It works the same way. So great question again. If your cat is vomiting and you think it could be due to the food, it certainly could be what we call a food intolerance, which is a, which is a type of an adverse food reaction in your, in your cat. And so your veterinarian can kind of ask those questions. And when we ask those questions and you're at your veterinarian's office and we're doing the 20 questions asking you about the history, six months or a year ago, we're using all that information to build a picture about what could be going on with your pet. So it's not just asking questions for nothing. We, it really helps us to determine what is going to be uh, the best approach to get your pet in the best health. But certainly vomiting in kittens could be related to a food intolerance as well. All right. Last one. Joe wants to know, do you have to change treats if you have to switch the food up because of an allergy? Thank you, Joe. That is a perfect thing. So let's say your veterinarian is going to try to help you determine whether your pet has a food allergy and you have been put, your pet's been put on a special diet. Yes, we want to eliminate all other protein, all other foods, except for that diet that your veterinarian has prescribed for your pet. Because let's say your pet might be allergic to beef. And so we put your pet on a special diet, but then you go to the store and you buy a treat that has beef in it and you're feeding that periodically Well, your pet can still have a reaction. So meanwhile, you're thinking it's not a food allergy. My pet doesn't have food allergy. It's not working. This new diet is not working. No, it could be the new treats that you bought. And so absolutely, if your pet is on a prescription diet, please only feed the prescription diet that your veterinarian has prescribed for him or her. And that's the best way to tell. Great question. Thank you so much. All right, that was it, Dr. Westbrook. What's awesome. happening next weekend? Awesome. So thank you guys for all of your questions. Please come see us at the Houston SPCA. July 3rd, we are having an open house. So please come on by and see us. At that open house, we are going to have cotton candy, and it's going to be a family affair, and we're going to have ICs, and it's going to be really fun. There's going to be dogs and cats, and it's going to be really, really good time. So please come see us from 11 to 3, July 3rd. If you need more um, information about that, please go to our website, HoustonSPCA.org. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for joining us again.